May the peace of Christ be with you, Peace United Church of Christ. My sermon title today is God's Breathing Energy. In this passage from Romans 8, Paul notes the very real experience of human suffering, and then he connects it most amazingly with the pain of the planet. We read his phrase, for the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. Hearing all of creation, given a vitality and animation with the liveliness of God's breathing energy. In the days of coronavirus, we have no doubts about our undeniable interconnection with all of God's creation. The very air we breathe can be laden with the deadly virus. The surfaces we touch can be fouled by unseen micro microorganisms waiting for us to place our now infected hands upon our defenseless face. The small bat from which this disease originated was protected in its natural environment but when brought in contact with our vulnerable bodies, all hell broke loose. There is now a marked line between before and after COVID-19. When we are awash with our powerlessness, we are undone. And this is why so many refuse reality. To yield to the wearing of a mask suggests others can impact my life. Too many want to believe they alone are captains of their own destiny. Paul's reminder in this passage is when the systems are broken and failure or futility or frustration is our new reality, we still have hope. Whether that failure comes because of politics, the limits of our healthcare system, or at work, in a marriage, as a parent, in a friendship, Paul affirms that through hope we are saved. This rare and beautiful hope springs not from our reserves, not from our imagination, but from God's Spirit encompassing our spirit. Paul Tillich notes that when he, what he hears in these prayers is we talk to somebody who is not somebody else, but we talk to the one within who is nearer to us than we are to ourselves. The Spirit helps us in our weakness interceding with sighs too deep for words, and God who searches the heart knows what is the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for the saints. It is our imperfection, our brokenness, that brings us most deeply into the presence of God. Years ago, as a young hospital chaplain, one of the patients that landed in my care and keeping was a local church pastor whom I knew lived with chronic pain. One afternoon when he was alone and not in a drug fog, I asked him what he had learned from his suffering, expecting deep wisdom to flow. He snorted his disgust. There is nothing redemptive in the midst of deep pain. There is no meaning to be found in suffering physical pain. The best you can hope is to slip into an altered state of consciousness. I learned years ago I was going to hurt whether I stayed in bed or I went to work. So I've been choosing work and the company of others ever since. My friend Bruce prayed and he had a huge congregation constantly remembering him prayer. But Bruce had determined to not allow prayer to be a substitute for action. Which reminds me of a classic question. If you were drowning, 
Would you rather look on the shore and see a bishop in his grand attire praying and kneeling for you? Or a con man who could swim, stripping as he dove into the water? Our actions always matter. John Claypool was a Baptist minister turned Episcopal elder, statesman, and colleague. His book, Tracks of a Fellow Struggler, gives witness to his daughter, Laura Lou's unsuccessful battle with leukemia. One Sunday, fresh from the hospital, Dr. Claypool stepped into the pulpit and spoke these words. The hardest thing of all for me in the last two weeks has been my helplessness in the face of my daughter's suffering. All I could do was to stand there by the bed and give her a sip of water now and then, rub her, reassure her, all of which seemed so inadequate in the face of such an immensity. I have been tempted either to explode in a fit of rage or to dissolve into despair. But when I got down there, down at the bottom, I was given three gifts. The gift of patience, the gift of enduring, and the strength to walk and not faint. Patience, endurance, resilience. This is the spirit helping a broken father in his weakness. The same spirit, sustainer of life, who will enable us to go on in these endless days with an endurance and resilience when left on our own, we could collapse in despair. Each of our lives is a powerful story in the telling. Even when we are isolated, reduced to size and groans, we are carried by a spirit who defies easy comprehension or blithe description. The swelling spirit spilled out with joy is as well the sustaining spirit soothing our souls and the interceding spirit speaking our hopes. Another colleague who through the years has been a gift to me watched his wife die of ovarian cancer. Doug used the Caring Bridge website to write out his pain and grief and to share with their wide network of friends what was happening in her ongoing course of treatment. In a dark night of writing and weakness, Doug shared a story of sighs and groanings and the Spirit's sustaining power. He writes, I remember a conversation early one morning when Patsy was groaning in bed and I asked, are you hurting? Is something wrong? And he writes in parentheses, a dumb question to ask. She said, dear one, sometimes it just helps me to groan because I can't put into words the anxiety, the, anxiety, the fears, and the suffering I feel. Doug then quotes this Roman passage from the Message Translation. God's Spirit is right alongside helping us. If we don't know how or what to pray, it doesn't matter. God does our praying in and for us, making prayer of our wordless sighs, our aching groans. With that reminder, Doug signs off. Think I'll go to bed and groan and hope that God really understands my inner moans. There's nobody else in here to hear me, but I will hope that the Spirit of God somehow translates all of this to the Heavenly Father. I believe that caring mothers and fathers do understand the cries and moans of hurting children when they are sobbing and can't put their pain into words. Oh God, I hope you understand me and what I'm feeling most of the time. I don't understand myself. This Holy Spirit, God's breathing energy, remains at work in this very day, 
When we are heaving sighs too deep for expression, when we are not generous listeners, we are still souls connected to the family of Christ. We remain children of the resurrection, alive with the fire of God and beautiful to behold, a diverse part of God's great neighborhood. Here is what comforts me in my inadequacies during this time of quarantine. Hope is not built on my spirituality. The unseen hope upon which I am dependent is formed and fostered by God's spirituality. The God beyond and behind creation, the God who is constantly renewing the world, is the God searching my depths and sustaining my heart. The God who meets me when once again I return to mindfulness. Even as creation waits with eager longing, so do we. We wait in kitchens, we wait in front of computer screens, we wait at home, isolated from friends and colleagues. As followers of the living Christ, we also wait in prayer as we wait with hope. Anglican priest R.S. Thomas, often called the poet of the hidden God, describes his waiting. There are nights that are so still that I can hear the small owl calling far off and a fox barking miles away. It is then that I lie in the lean hours awake, listening to the swell born somewhere in the Atlantic rising and falling, rising and falling wave on wave on the long shore by the village that is without light and companionless. And the thought comes of that other being who is awake too, letting our prayers break on him. Not like this for a few hours, but for days, years, for eternity. May we hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Amen.